we have already seen how quicksort works in this lesson we do the analysis of quicksort both its worst case and average case uh, time complexity and then we will also look at an iterative version of uh, quicksort which eliminates the recursive calls so as we know quicksort is a divide and conquer algorithm if the input is not small then it calls the partition algorithm and then calls itself recursively for the left partition and the right partition and the partition algorithm as we know in the in place version starts with two pointers i and j at the two ends of the array and it starts moving them closer to one another i moves to the right j moves to the left along the way if it finds any element in the left which belongs in the right partition and any element on the right which belongs in the left partition it swaps them exchanges them so it is doing both comparison and swap operations but it turns out that there are far more comparison operations than swap operations or at least the number of swap operations is cannot be greater than the number of comparison operations so we are going to only count the comparison operations so if we consider the worst case of quicksort as we already talked about it in the previous lesson that happens when we don't get equal partitions so the true worst case is every time partition is called it gives us highly skewed or the most unequal kind of partitions for example the first call to partition might give us one only one element in the left partition and n minus 1 in the right partition the next call to partition for n minus 1 elements might give us only one element in the left and n minus 2 elements in the right and so on and when this happens the recurrence relation for the time complexity of the worst case of quicksort will become t of n is t of 1 plus t of n minus 1 plus the cost of partitioning right so what is the cost of partitioning that is of n comparisons right so there can only be n comparisons that are made when partition is called for n elements and therefore we count that in the recurrence relation so t of n is t of 1 plus t of n minus 1 plus n now if we substitute n minus 1 in the same formula and apply the substitution method for solving this recurrence relation t of n minus 1 becomes t of 1 plus t of n minus 2 plus n minus 1 right and the t of 1 and n remain the same so if we keep on doing this we get n times t of 1 plus the summation n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 down to 1 and as we know this summation is nothing but n into n plus 1 by 2 and this will be t of 1 is some constant n times a constant plus n into n plus 1 by 2 so this term is uh, of the order n square so we can say that the worst case complexity t of n of quicksort is order n square right so that is why because of these unequal partitions we do not get n log n we get n squared as the worst case complexity of quicksort its average case performance is very good and that is what matters in practice a lot of times when we actually use quicksort as the sorting algorithm in an implementation so to analyze the average case complexity we need to make a few assumptions as always we only count comparisons other operations such as swapping and so on will be of the same order or of a lower order than the number of comparisons done so we only count the number of comparisons we also need to make two other assumptions we assume that the, the, the data elements are all distinct that is no two data elements are equal to one another we also assume that the partition occurs at a given position with equal probability that is the probability of the partition occurring in position 1 that is the first element of the data being the pivot is the same as the probability of any ith element becoming the pivot right so the partition may occur anywhere along the data array with equal probability and using that 
we analyze the average case because the average case performance is very significant in actual practice and it turns out that the average case of quick sort is much faster than its worst case so the average case is not going to be n squared right so now how do we analyze this when we do a partition we get two sub problems one is of size k minus 1 the other is of size n minus k the the other extra element will be the pivot which is actually in its correct position so it won't belong to either of these sub problems for various values of k which occur with equal probability we have to write the recurrence relation let's say we write t sub a n to indicate that it's the average case it will be n plus 1 plus 1 by n times the summation of 1 less than or equal to k less than or equal to n of t a of k minus 1 plus t a of n minus k how do we get this this is the cost of solving the first sub problem this is the cost of solving the second sub problem and those sub problems for various values of k occur with equal probability 1 by n hence the summation right and then this is the cost of the initial partition when we do the initial partition of n elements we do n plus 1 comparisons right that happens before any of the sub problems are generated so that is also included to analyze this we have to do a lot of maths right we are going to multiply both sides of this by n to get rid of that 1 by n if you do that we get n times t a of n is equal to n into n plus 1 plus 2 times of t a of 0 plus t a of 1 plus etc t a of n minus 1 how did we get this because these numbers are all symmetrical when you consider all the values of k from 1 to n you will get t of 0 twice t of a twice and so on right now we replace n by n minus 1 in this equation so you get n minus 1 times t a of n minus 1 is equal to n into n minus 1 plus 2 times of t a of 0 plus t a of 1 plus etc up to t a of n minus 2 now we subtract this from this right so when we subtract those two we get n times t a of n minus n minus 1 times t a of n minus 1 is equal to 2 n plus 2 times t a of n minus 1 right I'm going to rewrite that on the next slide so we got n times t a of n minus n minus 1 times t a of n minus 1 is equal to 2 n plus 2 times t a of n minus 1 this can be rewritten as t a of n divided by n plus 1 is equal to t a of n minus 1 by n plus 2 by n plus 1 right now we repeatedly substitute this to obtain t a of n minus 1 t a of n minus 2 and so on right if we do that in the end we can arrive at t a of n divided by n plus 1 is equal to 2 times sigma 3 less than or equal to k less than or equal to n plus 1 1 by k okay, that's the summation we arrive at now we are going to analyze this particular summation let me do that on the next slide so we had t a of n divided by n plus 1 equal to 
two times sigma 3 less than or equal to k less than or equal to n plus 1 of 1 by k. Now, this particular element right is less than or equal to integral 2 to n plus 1 of 1 by x dx and that happens to be log to the base e of n plus 1 minus log to the base e of 2 and from that we can now say T a of n is less than or equal to 2 into n plus 1 into this whole thing log to the base e of n plus 2 minus log to the base e of 2 right so which is O of n log n. So, here is a log n and n. So, this order of this is O n log n. So, the important thing is the average case performance of quick sort is n log n. This worst case is n squared, but what really matters in practice is average case. Can we make further improvements on quick sort? We can eliminate recursive calls to quick sort by using an iterative version, but doing so requires a stack right and its size of the stack should be of the order of 2 times log n and so on. So, what we do here is we have an outer loop that is repeated forever until false. So, it only exits when we do this return from the inner loop. In the inner loop as always if we see if the problem is trivial low less than high means there is more than one data element the problem is not trivial. So, as before we call the partition algorithm to obtain j. Now, we compare the two partitions that we get, right. So, here is one partition, there is j for you, this is low, this is high. So, I am comparing j minus low, that means the length of this with high minus j, which is the length of this. If the first partition is smaller, if j minus low is less than high minus j, then we sort the first partition first and we remember to sort the second partition. How do we remember to sort the second partition? We push j plus 1 and high to the onto the stack and we set high to j minus 1. That means, we part we solve the first part first. Otherwise, if this second partition is smaller, we solve that first. We set low to j plus 1 and solve the second partition first and we remember to solve the first partition by pushing it onto the stack. In the end, when the stack is empty, we return and when we are done with one partition, we delete those two values. So, by using this stack, the iterative version does not make any recursive calls and it also always solves the smaller partition first and doing that gives us even better performance. You can look at some of the performance numbers given in your textbook, you will see that often the performance of quicksort is twice as fast as that of merge sort in the average case. So, quick, quick sort as the name suggests is a highly efficient divide and conquer algorithm, although in the worst case its performance can be of order n square. So, when does the worst case occur for quick sort? With our assumption that the first element of the array is the pivot. Does it occur when the data is already sorted? Does it occur when all the data elements are equal to one another or no two data elements are equal? or when some of the data elements are equal to 0. When does the worst case occur for quick sort? The correct answer is A. When the data is fully sorted or almost sorted, that is the worst case for quick sort because what happens is each time the first element will be the pivot. So, you will end up with those n minus 1 kind of partitions. So, it will have to go through n minus 1 recursive levels, not the log n kind of performance that we get by dividing the array into two roughly equal parts. So, because of that, the worst case for quick sort is when the data is already sorted. That gives the n square kind of performance. Thank you.